Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question asks if I can analyze the mental health and personality factors that may be at work in the case of Tony Soprano. Specifically, I've been asked if I can look at the relationship between Tony and Dr. Jennifer Melfi. Just a reminder, I'm not diagnosing anybody in this video, only speculating about what could be happening in a situation like this. If you enjoyed this video, please like it, subscribe to my channel, and consider supporting me on Patreon. I'll put the link to Patreon in the description for this video. So first I'll cover the background of Tony Soprano and then move to mental health and personality factors. Tony Soprano is a fictional character in the series The Sopranos, which ran from 1999 to 2007. The character was played by the actor James Gandolfini. The series tells the story of Tony's leadership role in the DeMeo crime family. We see that Tony has a wife, Carmela, and two children, Meadow and AJ. Tony was born in 1959. He grew up in Newark, New Jersey. His father was a capo in the DeMeo crime family. He had a challenging relationship with his mother. She was unhappy and sadistic. Their relationship becomes an area of focus in the series. Tony would have severe panic attacks on occasion while he was growing up. Sometimes they would lead to unconsciousness. He would give college a try, but dropped out in the second semester and became more involved in criminal activity. At the beginning of the series, Tony is a capo and moves up to the position of street boss after season one. He committed his first murder in 1982. He personally committed eight homicides in the series. Throughout the six seasons, we see Tony's involved in a number of adventures, not only criminal activity, but relationship difficulties, challenging decisions, conflicted feelings, and his struggle with mental health problems. In the pilot episode, we see that he has a panic attack at his son's birthday party. He went to see a physician, but all the testing indicated there was no physical reason for the panic attack. He is referred to a mental health professional, specifically a psychiatrist by the name of Jennifer Melfi. Lorraine Bracco plays Jennifer in the series. This begins a turbulent therapeutic relationship that lasts for the entire series. Let's take a look at how that relationship between Tony and Dr. Melfi progresses. Tony is not happy about going to a mental health professional. He doesn't want to accept the reality that he has panic attacks. He became more comfortable with Dr. Melfi after she explained the rules about confidentiality. He has this story that he's in waste management, but Melfi knows that he's an organized crime figure. Early on, he talks about his mother and how she is distant, callous, and antagonistic. He also has this story about how ducks landed in his pool. He has trouble coping with the fact that they flew away. He became depressed. Melfi tries to look for a deeper meaning in the story about the ducks, but Tony storms out of the session, which becomes a recurring dynamic in their relationship. So right away in the series, we see that Melfi is applying a psychodynamic theory. She's looking for everyday situations and dreams to have some type of secret and deep meaning. Tony visits his mother in a retirement community, and this leads to another panic attack. At this point, Melfi prescribes an antidepressant named Prozac. It's clear she has a tremendous amount of faith in the effectiveness of psychotropic medication. I find it interesting that throughout the series, Tony had about five different affairs. Many people who take Prozac have sexual side effects, specifically a problem called anorgasmia, which is difficulty reaching orgasm. This problem seems inconsistent with Tony's behavior. Eventually, we see that Melfi prescribes lithium to Tony. Lithium is actually an element that has some mood-stabilizing properties under certain circumstances. Melfi returns to the topic of the ducks, connecting Tony's feelings about them leaving to his fears about losing his family. As the sessions continue, Tony talks about how he has resentment toward his wife because she doesn't want his mother to live with them. His mother has to live in a retirement community instead. Later, we would find out that Tony's mother has narcissistic personality disorder. Tony gets upset with Melfi again, this time when she was speculating as to the cause of a car accident Tony's mother was involved in. Later, we see that Tony storms out of another session when Melfi tries to get him to admit that he's actually angry with his mother. This is where we see the idea of Tony appearing to be happy on the outside, but internally, he was sad. It's referred to as the sad clown. 
We see another session where Tony storms out yet again, this time because Melfi tries to connect how he is thinking negatively to his depressive symptoms. Tony's depression becomes worse. He has hallucinations. Specifically, he sees a woman named Isabella, but later realizes that she is not real. Melfi suggests the hallucination could be an idealized maternal figure, which is a fairly Freudian conceptualization, consistent again with psychodynamic theory. Tony's uncle Jr. finds out about the therapy sessions. Melfi has to go into hiding for a while. Eventually, Melfi drops Tony as a client. She read this article suggesting therapy can actually make sociopaths worse. It could make them better at committing crimes. Stepping back and taking a look at this relationship between Tony and Melfi, we see some interesting dynamics. Tony's resistant just about the entire time, as indicated by how he repeatedly gets angry and runs out of the session. Tony was suspicious of Melfi at times, like when he thought she was trying to control him using the decorations in her office. Tony is sexually attracted to Melfi. She doesn't encourage that, which only frustrates Tony. He has trouble maintaining boundaries with women, especially when he finds them attractive. Melfi was the victim of an assault of a sexual nature in one episode. A technicality allowed the perpetrator to go unpunished. She had this internal conflict where she wanted to tell Tony about the situation because she knew that Tony would kill the perpetrator. What I find interesting about that episode is how Tony seems gentle and nurturing right before Melfi decides not to ask for his help. Tony was all too eager to cross that boundary. He wanted Melfi to be indebted to him. He wanted to do something special so that she would like him. Melfi also had a dream about this where Tony was represented as a Rottweiler who attacks her assailant. What do I think about this depiction of therapy in The Sopranos? Was this realistic? First of all, I think that the writing in The Sopranos was generally excellent. I think the series was really one of the best ever. Usually I'm quite disappointed with depictions of therapy in both series and in movies. The relationship between Tony and Melfi I think was realistic and compelling in many ways, but in some ways it did miss the mark. On the Tony Soprano side, the character was realistic and therefore contributed to the overall realism of the therapy sessions. As far as Dr. Melfi, her character was not as realistic. As far as looking at the positives and the negatives, the positive part would be Tony Soprano, and the negative part would be Dr. Melfi. Let's take a look at that in more detail. As far as Tony Soprano, I liked the way he was portrayed. It was consistent with sociopathy, which is more accurately referred to as factor two psychopathy. We see that Tony was irritable and antagonistic. He was attracted to Melfi. He frequently tried to violate boundaries. He had a sense of entitlement. He felt the rules didn't apply to him. He resisted the idea that poor relationships could be causing his symptoms. When he didn't get his way, he would storm out of the office. So all those characteristics are fairly consistent with factor two psychopathy. Now looking at Dr. Melfi, there were a few things here that I felt were realistic. So I'll start with those and then move to the less realistic components. She tried to maintain the boundary with Tony. She generally did a good job of that in the beginning. She believed that unresolved childhood conflicts linked to symptoms, which not every therapist agrees with, but it is a common way of conceptualizing cases. She was apprehensive about providing therapy to Tony. This seems realistic given that he had killed people and would kill people in the future. And she didn't turn him into the authorities. In order to break confidentiality, Tony would have to indicate that he was going to harm someone in the future. Hurting people in the past would not activate Melfi's duty to protect under most circumstances. So this was realistic. She really couldn't say anything. There were problems in other areas as far as Dr. Melfi. So I'll review the unrealistic components here. She revealed Tony's identity to people around her, which is an ethical problem under almost all circumstances. Her actual therapeutic style wasn't particularly helpful or realistic. She kept challenging Tony when it was not working, and she failed to adjust her strategy. She just kept trying the same thing and getting the same result. She dropped Tony as a client based on one article that she read. Both factor one and factor two psychopaths can benefit from therapy, so this premise was not accurate. Melfi confirmed all of Tony's suspicions about how 
mental health professionals are not helpful. So in a way, she kind of hurt the profession and specifically hurt Tony Soprano. It made him entirely lose faith in the ability to receive successful treatment. If she felt as though she couldn't make progress with Tony, she could have just referred him to another practitioner. Summing up my opinion on the therapy and the Sopranos, overall, I did like it, but the areas for improvement, as I mentioned, were really all on the therapist's side. It's like the writers simply didn't understand the therapeutic relationship or for whatever reason decided not to put that into the series. They remained trapped in the initial conceptualization they wrote. It was like the therapy was stuck in first gear. We saw the same dynamics play out over and over. Malfi challenges Tony about something related to his early childhood or relationships, and Tony storms out. I would have really liked to see the therapy actually progress in some meaningful way, even if the end result was failure. For instance, I think it would have been more compelling to have Tony Soprano resolve his attraction to Melfi, to understand the value of boundaries. Maybe he could have applied that knowledge to some area in his life. One other unrealistic component that bothered me was the general conceptualization of Tony's problems. They had so much to work with here in terms of excellent character development among many characters. For instance, they made Tony's mother narcissistic, but they did not explore how her narcissism could have led to his various problems, specifically the fact that he was narcissistic and psychopathic. I felt like the whole idea of the panic attacks was original. I'm glad they looked at panic attacks, but his experiences didn't actually align with that history too well. As far as how therapy was represented in Sopranos, I think what it comes down to is that therapy is emotionally complex. There really is a lot to it. It's not always easy to represent in the short amount of time featured in a series. An understanding of the topic comes with watching the dynamics unfold over a long period of time. When therapy gets compressed, when it gets packaged for something like a series, it really does lose a lot of value. The last question I'll cover here is, was Tony realistically depicted as a sociopath? For the most part, yes. Let's take a look at his personality profile. We see low openness to experience, he had rigid thinking, below average conscientiousness, he was irresponsible and impulsive, mid-range extroversion, we see he had a high level of sensation seeking, but a low level of positive emotions. We see extremely low agreeableness, he lacked empathy, he was not straightforward, and he was distrusting. And his level of neuroticism was a little bit above average. He was depressed, anxious, angry, and had difficulty resisting temptation. Tony had all three of the dark triad traits, psychopathy, narcissism, and Machiavellianism. As far as psychopathy, he did not seem to be as manipulative as I would have expected, and he did show some remorse and guilt. This was unrealistic, but characters like Tony are often portrayed in this manner. I think it's done so that they have enough depth to keep the story moving. If he was highly manipulative and remorseless, each episode would have been flat and monotonous. The interpersonal relationships would not have been meaningful. Therefore, there couldn't be any type of exploration that revealed anything sensitive or emotionally complex. So I think they kind of move away from psychopathy a bit when they do this, but I can understand why. Tony Soprano was an anti-hero. Therefore, he needed to be given just enough sensitivity and depth to somehow offset his horrible criminal activities. Those are my thoughts on the Sopranos and the relationship between Tony and Melfi. Please put any opinions and thoughts in the comments section. They always generate an interesting dialogue. As always, I hope you found my analysis of this topic to be interesting. Thanks for watching.